Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all for leadership and team development. Speaker Joe Woodley coming to you with another key moments for faith. Thank you so much for joining me on today's broadcast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a really great topic. I'm talking about having good courage. The Bible talks about good courage. Uh, before we go any further, make sure you click on the like button below. Subscribe to this channel. Share with your friends. Share with your neighbors. Share with your family. Share with the guy down the street around the corner. Share with the enemy, and he may just happen to become your friend. But whatever you do, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I believe that God has a really great word for you in today's broadcast. Also, check out some of the links below, some of those inspirational, aspirational, and empowering books that will certainly equip you as a believer in your walk of faith. So, today, as I said, I'm going to be talking to you about having good courage. I believe with all my heart that God has positioned us to step into his promises in a way that we've never experienced before. Now, that does not mean that things in the world are going to get better. But I mean, for those of you who are believers, I believe that God is positioning you to make some of the greatest impact for the kingdom that we have ever seen in history. Why is that? Because I believe God is purifying many of our hearts, many of our minds. And I think it's important, and I know for a fact that it's very important, that we utilize this time wisely so that we are walking in what the Word of God calls good courage. What is good courage? It's not human courage, because human courage is fainting. But good courage comes from the Lord because I understand that God, His Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit, His presence is in me, it surrounds me, and it goes before me. I want you to say that with me real quick. The Holy Spirit is in me, He surrounds me, and He goes before me. Do not ever, ever forget that. Because when you understand that the Holy Spirit is in you, he surrounds you and he goes before you, then you know that wherever he leads you, you will prosper. Wherever he leads you, that territory where you put your feet, where you put your feet, you take it as territory for the kingdom of God. And I think it's such an important topic because I hear so many believers and I see so many postings from believers who are caught up in fear mentality right now. The news media, as I call it, the negative news networks uh, have uh, soured and have, uh, have infiltrated the minds of many believers around the world uh, where they are consumed to such a point where corona or whatever the problem is that's going on around them has been elevated to a place of God in their lives. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, then we're going to miss out on what happens in this new move of God, this move that God is ushering us through. I was talking to some friends and family uh, actually over the last couple of days, and I really talked about the importance of that, about how God is shifting us and how God is moving us and, and, and maneuvering us and putting us in place to step out and to move in a way that we, we have not seen before. And that because of our, dis our distraction, because of many uh, persons in the body of Christ are so distracted by what's going on around them, they are not viewing this as an opportunity. Uh, they're, they're cowering in fear. You know, when I can't say hello to my brother and sister, it reminds me of uh, uh, months ago, I actually say a couple of weeks ago, you know, running into some fellow believers who would not even, who didn't even want to acknowledge my presence uh, because they were afraid that they may get corona. So it's like, hey, hey, sister, hey, brother, how you, hey, good see you, goodbye, right? Because they're so fearful of what's going on. Uh, and they've allowed it to consume them and to control their thinking and to get their eyes off of God. And we need to get our eyes back on God. Every promise from God is yes and amen. But we've got to be properly positioned and properly postured to walk into the promises. Because if we are not positioned to take the promises, then we're going to miss out on this move. 
So I'm going to encourage you. I am certainly encouraging you during this time to press into God. You know, when I hear Christians talking about, I'm with Christians who are supposedly mature, talking about, uh, you know what? We're probably not going to be at church for about a year. And I think about it and I'm thinking to myself, would you go everywhere else and you spend time around all these other people, but somehow fellowship with your other brothers and sisters in Christ, you, you can put that on a shelf. But the idea of, of, of going to you know Walmart or Target or the grocery store, whatever else, that didn't terrify you. But spending time around other brothers and sisters in Christ, it's, it, it instills fear in you. Something's wrong. That tells me that we've allowed the enemy to slip into the camp and we need to expel him. I mean, to tell him that this is not your territory, that this is God's territory and we're going to stand on the word. Now, I'm not going to press you to make a decision either way. I am going to press you uh, and press you to get into the word. I am going to impress upon you to study the word. I am going to impress upon you to get on your knees and begin to pray so you can hear from God with, with clarity, with understanding. But you need to turn the news off and hear from God. Turn the news off and hear from God so that you can move when he tells you to move. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in you, it surrounds you, and it goes before you. I'm going to keep saying that this broadcast because I want you to I want you to really grasp hold of that. I want you to really, really feel the Spirit of God in you. I want you to know the Spirit of God is real and that, uh, that we serve an amazing and incredible God. And so as we're getting ready to step into this move, as God is shifting the church, I don't know if you can sense it or not, but the whole body is shifting. It's not just the world around us. The whole body is making a major shift. And, uh, and God is looking for some believers. God is looking for somebody that he can count on. He's looking for somebody that he can say, you know what, that's a man, a woman of God that I can trust. That's a man, a woman of God that I know operates in good courage. So I'm going to go here to Joshua, the first chapter. And in the beginning here, we see right after, uh, right after Moses has, has expired, uh, Moses is gone. Joshua is now the leader and Joshua needs to move the people forward, right? The children of Israel have been in the wilderness for 40 years. They can't stay where they are. If they continue to stay where they are, they're going to, they're going to be decimated. It's time for them to move. It's time for them to get into position, right? And so here we see God speak to Joshua and give certain uh, commands to him and certain admonishments to him so that Joshua can prepare not only himself and his heart, but the people of God. He can prepare them to begin to move forward and, and lay claim, not just occupy, but lay claim to the territory that he has promised them. See, there's a difference between occupation and, and laying claim to it. Occupation means I'm just here temporarily. I'm, I'm, I, am, I am basically babysitting. But laying claim to it and taking possession of the land that God has for you, that means it belongs to you. Occupy means what? I'm just, I'm just babysitting. I have, I, I just, I'm just, I just here temporarily. But I'm, when I take possession, that means it belongs to you. So God is really trying to get Joshua's heart right, his mind right, so that he can lead these people in the right direction. So here we go. Joshua, the first chapter, and we're actually going to talk about verse 6 first. And it says, be strong and confident and courageous, for you will give this people as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So here we go. He's already talking about, hey, be confident, be courageous. Why? Because God is in you. God's around you. He goes before you. Joshua, I did all these things before you before. I brought you out of the land of, of Egypt. I protected you. I provided for you. I fed you. I mean, how much more could you ask for? I, I covered you. I, I went before you and defeated your enemies. I gave you the intellect and the knowledge to, to, to just live God. I gave you the word. I gave you the word of God. I gave you the law to sustain you. There's so many things that I did for you. Do not, do not get afraid. Do not become afraid. Do not back down from what I have promised you, Joshua. Stand up and be courageous. And that's what God is saying to you right now. Don't back down on the word. I, I know what the news is saying. I know what the, the governors are saying. I know what the president is saying. I know what Congress is saying. 
But you know what? All of that is irrelevant according to my word. When you not line up with my word. Yeah, I'm sure they, they're doing things and many of them want to do what is in the best interest of the country. But we serve, we serve a God that is above the country and above the world. We serve, the, we serve the creator of the universe, the master of the universe, the creator of creativity. And that's the one we really need to be pressing in right now. Not sitting by our television says listening to see what's going to happen next. Right? Because we're doing that and then all of our decisions become fear-based rather than faith-based. Jumping down to verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, my brother and sister, the Lord your God, he is with you. Listen to me. He is with you. You're concerned about how this is going to work out. Where am I going to get the money from? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And God is saying, prepare yourself. Get focused. Stop being so consumed about everything that's going on in the world. All the Twitter wars and the Instagram wars and the Facebook wars and, and the friendly fire going on in the Christian community and people tearing each other down. All, don't get involved in any of that stuff. Right now, my brother and sister, God is saying, I want you to get prepared. I want you to get ready. Here's what it says in verse number 10. It says, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, go throughout the camp and command the people saying, Prevent, prepare your provisions. For within three days you are to cross this river, Jordan, to go in and take possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving you to not, not occupy. It says to possess, to possess. He's telling them, get yourself ready. I believe that during this time, God is saying to us, get yourselves together. Get your provisions together. Get your minds together. Get focused. Start praying like you've never prayed before. Start worshiping like you've never prayed before. Press into him like you have never done before. Give him some, give him a hallelujah praise like you have never done before. Joshua is commanding these people as he's heard from the Lord, it's time to get rolling. And I believe that God is saying to us, it's time to get rolling. Let's get our stuff together. We need to have some good courage during this time because guess what? Some decisions need to be made that are not going to be popular. Choices are going to be made that maybe the general public may not agree with. Things are going to be said that are not going to be uh, that are not going to be politically correct. Ideas are going to be espoused that are not going to line up with the mainstream. Get yourself together so you can be prepared to do what God is calling you to do during this time and in this season. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get left behind. You are going to miss out on what God is doing in this time. So I'm challenging you. I'm challenging each and every one of you that if you want to have good courage and do what God is telling you to do in this season and be a part of a move that has not happened in a body before. If you want that to happen in your life, if you want to be, if you want to be a uh, if you want to be a vessel used by God during this time, then I'm going to challenge you. Eliminate the distractions. Press into God. Pray. Worship. Seek his face. Because God is about to do something extraordinary. But you're going to have to be of good courage. You're going to have to stand up and do what may be unpopular. As I said, for the believer, God is sharpening your faith. And this could be, this is, I believe, going to be the greatest season ever. And it will continue to get greater. Because in the darkest of times, the light shines bright. So I believe that it's going to continue to get better and better and greater and greater for the believer. But it may not get that way for the world. The world may not see that. And what does that mean for you? That means that you are going to have to stand up in the midst of what other people are saying, in the midst of accusations, in the midst of, 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 uh, of chaos, in the midst of criticism. You're going to have to be of good courage in order to take possession, not to occupy, 
not to occupy, but in order to take possession of the promise that God has for your life, you're going to have to have good courage, my brother and sister. Good courage. And good courage is hard to find by, come by, excuse me. Good courage is hard to come by. Why? Because people will rely on their own strength, their own power, and their own ability. And when you do that, you're going to miss out because human strength and ability is forever fainting. But God's word, God's power, he's eternal. So I pray that you got something out of this. If you need prayer, please don't hesitate to let me know. I am more than willing to pray for you uh, and come into agreement with God's word over your life. Uh, don't forget to check out the links below. Subscribe to this channel. Share this channel. Share this word with your friends, your neighbors, and as I said, even with your enemies, and they may just happen to become your friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm author Leisha Regina Love and Speaker Joe Woodley, and this has been, this has been another key moment for faith. It's time for you to walk in good courage. God bless you.